You, me, we, TCG. What's up guys? So today I have a story about how your boy came into possession of one of the most expensive Naruto CCG cards on the market. This one right here. And you'll know soon enough. But I know what a lot of you are thinking. Why do you have this card? How expensive could this card be? There was a Naruto card game? Well, yeah. In 2006, Bandai launched the Naruto card game in America. The first set was Pato Hokage, and it was a hit. Cards were selling out almost instantly. Sounds pretty familiar, huh? Naruto was at its hype with Shippuden, but unfortunately after 7 short years and 28 sets... Wow, I didn't think there was that many sets of this card game. Bandai decided to pull the plug and just let the Naruto TCG, CCG, whatever. What matters is that the Naruto card game is dead, and people really don't know why. I think it's because card games really didn't pick it up as a serious game like, you know, Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, or Yu-Gi-Oh! Because no one really played it. Like, I personally never learned how to play it, and no one I knew knew how to play it. It kind of got like that elementary school treatment where everyone who collected them liked collecting them, but no one ever took the time to learn how to play, if that makes any sense. So with all that cleared up, back in the day, my main card game was Yu-Gi-Oh. Yep, I played Yu-Gi-Oh way before I ever started playing Magic or learned how to play Pokemon. I played Yu-Gi-Oh. I was lucky enough to live relatively close to one of the Yu-Gi-Oh regionals in my state. So the story takes place at a regional. Or I remember being super bummed because it was bougie format and the floodgates were abundant. So the meta just sucked. I found myself wandering around the convention hall and spotted a guy chilling at a table by himself. And I asked if he had any trades. He said yes, we exchanged binders and started the trading process. Which, if you've never traded in Yu-Gi-Oh, it's a really, really difficult process to understand. There's so many like mind games and rules that it could be its own sport if it wanted to be. And if you're interested in learning about it, I might make another video. Just let me know in the comments. So I get done playing mental gymnastics with this guy for about 10-15 minutes the trade went on, and I finally find something that I want. This fifth Hokage ultimate rare card just beautiful beautiful no i didn't want i didn't want a Yu-Gi-Oh card i wanted this a card from a card game that has stopped circulating just one year prior and let's face it boys she's kind of high on the waifu tier list that, that that's really why she's definitely one of the top characters anyways he let me know that the card is a pretty rare card it was about 65 dollars at the time However, I think the guy knew that no other person at the regional was going to show interest in this card. So he starts going over my binder again and again, until eventually he says that he really didn't see anything. Yu-Gi-Oh related. But, he did see a Charizard that I had in my binder. And you know, I thought it was pretty funny that we're trading a Pokemon card for a Naruto card at a Yu-Gi-Oh event. Granted, this Charizard was the Stroke Charizard from Flashfire, which was one of the newest sets at the time. It was only about 20 bucks. But even back in the day, the card game community knew that Charizards typically went up in price, hence why it was in the binder in the first place. And what happened next isn't something you'll ever see happen at Yu-Gi-Oh! Trade ever. Well, I guess it really wasn't a Yu-Gi-Oh! Trade considering we're trading, you know, different cards. But the dude just does a straight trade taking the $45 loss. Now, I'm sure, like I said, the guy knew that he wasn't gonna move this card anytime soon, and that this was like an investment for trade bait later on. So we trade each other our cards, hand each other back our binders, and head our separate ways. What an absolute idiot! Yeah, you wanna look at the Stroke Charizard price now on TCG Player? Boom. A measly like four to five dollars. Four to five dollars. But our beautiful, beautiful Mizukage, she's going for a whopping, drum roll, drum roll, $400 for a card game that isn't even circulating anymore. $400. Look at it. Look at it. So the main takeaway from this video is uh, people will spend an absurd amount of money for their waifu. An absurd amount for a piece of cardboard with their waifu on it. 
$400. All right, well, thank you. And if you enjoyed this story time video, let me know. Let me know in the comments, like the video, maybe subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. Um, and maybe I'll make more of these. We TCG out.